She said, Mom, I was hit 74 times in the head and on the head. I said, did you count? Yes, she said, I did. I counted as long as I could, she said. When the settlement was liberated from the Russian aggressors, we found the same torture chambers where inhumane conditions were created for our people. It was in these torture chambers that the character and will of our local population was broken. I was in that window. Which one? The first one. On the second floor. My son was in the first window on the other side. My daughter was there, and I don't know where my daughter-in-law was. But we were all on the same floor and through thin walls. But we did not see each other. Russians visited the home of Alina Gaponenko, a resident of the village of Kozakalopen, on April 6th. They took the whole family, her son and daughter-in-law, her daughter and Alina herself. They taped her eyes and took her somewhere. As it turned out later, they brought them not far away to the building of the local train station, where the occupiers had equipped one of their torture chambers. The Gaponenkos, who have never hidden their patriotic views, were accused of being fire controllers, who were supposedly passing information about the movements of Russian troops to the Ukrainian armed forces. My only regret is that we weren't really corrective. We weren't. Everything would be different now. We had to be taught how to make adjustments. Where to call, what to do. And I think everything would be different. The human body is quite capable of enduring and surviving the pain inflicted. Her body hardly reminds her of the torture, when electrodes were attached to her ears and the current was turned on, of the bruises and swelling from the brutal beating, but the traces of it will remain forever in her soul, Olena says. The girls probably took it easier than the boys. My son is the worst off. We girls talk to each other. We probably have more work to do. We need to pay attention to the kids, and it's a little easier. But for a guy, this humiliation is very hard. And I think that those guys who were here, no one wants to tell what happened here, what happened here, what happened here. Even here in this room. And I don't think anyone will want to tell what they did to them on the mountain. It will just die with them with each of us. After inhumane interrogations on the second floor of the station, the family was returned to a cell in the semi-basement, which was packed to the brim with similarly poor people. There they could take a break from the abuse and support each other talk. Well, quietly in my ear with my daughter, And in the morning, I helped my son drink water. His hands were so beaten that he could not hold the water jar. He could not unscrew it. His hands were beaten, very beaten. They just kept him here, telling him that tomorrow everyone would be used up, everyone would dig graves and everyone would be used up. And life flies by so fast and you realize that you can't do anything about it. My son was sitting there on the floor, my daughter and I were there, and the boys were there. There was also an uncle who was the same age as my father, born in 51, so I don't know what he could have done. There were also young guys, there was a father and son from Nova Kozacha, Andri and Artem. And 
No one can find Andrei to this day. He disappeared. We were released after some time, but he's still missing. The woman recalls that her daughter-in-law was released first. She was very beaten and exhausted, but they let her go. The next day, she was pushed out as well. Her son was held in a Russian torture chamber for four days. Alina Gaponenko's 25-year-old daughter was held the longest. The hardest part. When I came home and the children were still here, that was the hardest part. You can forgive physical pain, but humiliation is not. It is impossible to forgive. When you grew up in this village, this station was your home and you were brought here. Put against the wall like a criminal. Hit on the head more than once. And then forced to climb to the second floor in a non-human way. Well, it is impossible to forgive. My son was black. My daughter had her hair torn out, her head pierced, her nails torn out. And my daughter-in-law was also blue. They tortured me and my son with electricity, that's for sure. My daughter did not confess. Well, after the occupation, they found two cracks in her skull, took an X-ray, and that's how it was. She said, Mom, they hit me 74 times on the head. I said, did you count? Yes, she said, I was counting. I counted as long as I could, she said. Her hair was torn out, her nails were torn out. And she drank tea quietly for two weeks and was silent. She was just silent, she would lie down and walk. And silently, whether she was lying there or crying. And don't come in, don't come in, don't touch me. Well, little by little, my girl came back to life. And so did my daughter-in-law. Well, there was more work in that job. It was also fun, very fun. Smiling bitterly, Olina admits that her family was lucky to survive. But the fate of many prisoners of this torture chamber, as well as dozens of other torture chambers on the occupied Ukrainian lands, still remains unknown. When the settlement was liberated from Russian aggressors, we found the same torture chambers where inhumane conditions were created for our people. It was in these torture chambers that the character and will of our of the local population was broken. People were taken there from Tokarivka, Prokhody, from the Zolochayev community. There were two such torture chambers, one in Hoptivka, at the crossing point, and one in Kozaka Lopen, where they made cages and grates where both women and men were crammed into. They used electric shocks, hot wax, wires and needles. Well, they carried out such brutal torture among local people. There was information from the locals that there were people who died in these torture chambers, who were beaten to death. And then the Russians either buried them in local cemeteries or took them to Hoptivka, so we do not know the fate of these people yet. In addition to physical pain and humiliation, the psychological pressure exerted by the torturers added to the suffering. We're already near Kharkiv. Your people have abandoned you. I said, where is near Kharkiv? We hear the exit, we hear the whistle. And we hear the arrival. And the fact that they were shelling us regularly. One tank came in, shot, drove around to the other side of the village and shot again at the village to keep us in shape. So your guys are shooting. Yours well, I said, ours, so it's necessary. To take us to the family, you have to shoot. 
Well, somehow there was not a single shot in the village from ours. It was always from them, them, not from us and us. Many people went through this torture chamber in Kazaka Lopen, and the names of many of them are still on the lists of missing persons. Their bodies are most likely buried in unmarked graves somewhere. At first, it was hard to believe that all this was done to peaceful Ukrainians by those who were considered good neighbors 10 years ago. Although it was not only Russians who tortured her family, Alina says, the Russians were unrivaled in terms of cruelty. There were Russians and there were, I don't even know how to call them. Residents of the Luhansk region who collaborated with the Russians, they are Ukrainians. The fact that they changed their shoes. Changed their clothes, what they were told there, that they were fooled is one thing, but in terms of cruelty, they are katsaps. They are not ours, they are strangers. They are just strangers, foreigners. They came to our land, they destroyed our world, they just destroyed it. They do not create anything, they have broken everything. Alina says she knows very well who exactly ratted out their family. However, she does not hold a grudge against them, saying that no one has cancelled karma and she will find them and punish them. The woman also believes that the occupation has shown her who is worth what in this life and allowed her to get rid of dishonest people and find real, close-minded people. Yes, I am Ukrainian. My passport says Ukrainian. I have a Ukrainian passport. I have everything Ukrainian. I have had a Ukrainian flag on my house since I was 14 years old. Everything will be Ukrainian. Everything will be Ukrainian, that's the only way. In the deoccupied territories of Ukraine, 101 places where Russian invaders illegally detained and tortured Ukrainian citizens were discovered. The largest number 31 torture chambers are located in the Kharkiv region. The number of people who never made it out of these hellish places alive is still unknown. In total, as of February 23, 2024, police investigative units in the Kharkiv region are conducting pre-trial investigations into 483 criminal proceedings into the disappearance of 566 civilians under special circumstances, including 343 men, 135 women and 88 children.